Welcome back RC tankers. In today's video we are looking at Henlong's 1 scale M1A2 Abrams. This model arrives RTR meaning it's ready to run. You provide 6 AA batteries for the radio and everything else is in the box. I do love an Abrams. Really excited to dive into this tank. Nicely packaged. We see it arrives fully painted. I'm gonna gently remove it from its foam enclosure here and conduct our two minute test run. We do have a video and a link below. It leads you to Hobby Squawk and describes this two minute test drive. We wanna verify that everything works and assuming that it does, we can move to this section which is installing the cosmetic accessory parts. Anyone familiar with building a plastic model is gonna have no problem with this. It takes about 30 to 45 minutes to clip out our parts and install them. This is the infrared receiver to allow the tank participate in infrared battles with other tanks. It's a pretty neat feature and we're going to make a separate video that covers the features of all of these TK6 series equipped Henlong tanks. Check again for that in the link in the description below. These cosmetic accessory parts largely just press fit in. I didn't use any glue. Especially around these road wheels we want to retain the ability to remove those covers in the future if ever needed, so no glue required nor recommended. Decals are simple enough. These are adhesive peel and stick decals for the CIP or, or combat identification panels. Uh, these uh, Venetian blind style around the side and up on the turret it takes a bit of doing, but we just want to go slowly and gently stick that decal all the way around. I didn't use any clear coat sealer, but you're welcome to. Now, in certain areas, the included tank oil or glycerin is restricted, and so check your local shipping restrictions. This may or may not be in the box. If it is, it's simply one or two drops per hour of tanking, of running this glycerin smoker. If you do need to source that locally, it's not too difficult to find. And then now we can plug in our 2S 1800 milliamp hour battery. Again, that was provided. It's been charging while we've been talking and installing these cosmetic accessory parts. And we can begin to, to run the tank. Now, overall, I do really enjoy the Abrams as it stands out of the box. Uh, this is how we see it in the shaded factory painted version. Now, the advantage, I think, of 116 scale tanks is not only are they fun to drive and to play with, but also for scale modelers out there, we can do something like this. So this is a project I'm currently working on. It is based on the same Henlong Abrams you see to the left and just a few hours of, of paint and weathering and we're about, we're about halfway through. But anyway, let's head out and take a look at how this tank runs in its stock RTR form. very precise on our inputs and really excited about this tank. Individual suspension as we see there and a very good speed. The, the TK6 allows precise slower movements, proportional inputs and for elevation and depression of the main gun, traversing the turret across 320 degrees uh, and moving the tracks themselves. But it's also a fairly quick vehicle. This is the upgrade version, meaning that it's lighter. It's got steel gears and gearbox inside, but the en entirety of the rest of the outside of the tank is ABS plastic. Track recoil. This has been tuned to the lower setting, so a more sensible recoil for that 120 millimeter cannon. I do love an Abrams, <laughs> I gotta say. Love the small, precise movements, and it just looks the part.
All right, so we're back in the studio, got the Abrams cleaned up, and here to give you my final thoughts on the Henlong 116 scale M1A2 Abrams. In a word, solid. This tank is solid. It's a great contender for a first tank. It's a great uh, option for someone who's already familiar with RC tanks and perhaps are moving from the smaller sizes like a Sherman or a Panzer and now is ready for something larger. Uh, in many different ways, the tank appeals to me. I'll sort of rattle off the top of my list here is it's got a service history that's unmatched and it continues to be a relevant tank to this day. The current uh, SEP3 that's currently planned for the tank is intended to keep uh, this platform in service for another couple of decades at this point and perhaps even longer still. So from that standpoint, it has history, it's got a future, from a modeler standpoint, there are so many different variations of this tank that can be depicted upon which this Henlong makes a really convincing base. The proportions are there, the overall shape and sort of layout of things are there. There are a couple of, of things that a modeler will need to remedy, but we'll talk about that in a second. But overall, from a modeler's perspective, it's an excellent base for personalization and customization and scaling it out, just increasing the overall accuracy and scale fidelity of the model. Now, from an RC tanker's perspective, if you don't care about the history, if you don't care about the looks and you're just concerned how does it run, I can say that due to its wide wheelbase and, and good ground clearance, it's ample suspension, the, the way that these road wheels are laid out and the wide tracks, all of that sums to a very a very comfortable driving machine. Uh, I'm not concerned about losing a track if I'm on dirt or loose gravel or very small pebbles, say on a washed out riverbed or even on grass. So it sort of cuts through all of that. And unlike some of the other MBTs, like say the T90 that has a lot of detail up here on the front lower hull, which is susceptible to being chipped or broken off if you're if you ever bottom out on rocks, the Abrams, as you see here, nice smooth bottom. So I'm not worried about breaking anything if I do <laughs> roll over the occasional rock or boulder as I'm apt to do. From a scale standpoint, there is a lot here. I like the fact that they've balanced something like the Medusa and you've got your coax uh, 762 and also uh, the one here on on this side, you also have a nice balance of that detail while still remaining very clean on the side. This is important because some of the other tanks from Henlong have little hatches or doors or grab handles or shackles or tools that are hanging off the side of the tank and that are exposed to banging up against things and falling off. So the Abrams, nice and clean on the side. This is all one piece as part of uh, the upper hull here not a lot to fall off even back here the shackles have been emitted and aside from this small piece here none of this is a separate piece that is maybe susceptible to being lost in the weeds now so that's what I like about the tank no tank is perfect so let's cover a couple of things that I think can be improved and, and if they're not deal breakers for you you should at least be aware of them uh, first off to any scale guy we're gonna notice that the vision block for the driver the commander's cupola here, his 360 degree vision blocks and the CITV, they're all empty. There's no, um, there's no attempt to depict the, uh, the vision blocks that are there. So maybe a clear piece of, of film or it's just some a clear, clear piece of plastic, anything for a modeler, I'd like to cover those because as you see in any reference photos of a real Abrams, those aren't holes, those are clear vision blocks. So, so something to be mindful of. For the super persnickety, we'll notice that the real Abrams has a non-skid coating and this does not, this is smooth. Um, however, again, I don't think that that's the end of the world. It's just something to be mindful of. Something that I do think even the most casual tanker should be mindful of is the overall fit and finish of this Abram. In some areas, it's superb. In a couple of areas, something like this, I'll just show this to you here. And there's about a one millimeter tall gap across the across 30 millimeters or so on both sides. So a little bit of flex between the lower hull and the upper hull. This is the glasses here. So um, if those types of things aren't a big deal for you, that this Abrams is perfect. 
if something like this is something that you're going to see and want to remedy, just be advised at going into it. I strongly believe the key to happiness is managed expectations. But other than that, there's nothing more positive than I can say about the Abrams other than I love it. I have three. <laughs> and I'm not just keeping them stock. I do think the stock paint is good and the decal options are nice, but I'll give you a quick peek of a work in progress that I'm working on now, just to give our viewers out there a sense of where we can take these models. Now this is very much a work in progress and there's a lot of parts still missing on it, but we've got, if you check in the link in the description below, uh, on Hobby Squawk, we do have a link to where we have these magnetic 3D printed parts, for example, uh, an FPV camera housing for the CITV, so that actually works. And um, our mount here for our for a second machine gun and even we've taken the stock APU and made it functional so that now we can power by a little 2s battery we can power different accessories this powers the FPV camera and our beacon there on the right so <laughs> From stock all the way towards fully scaled out and weathered, I think the Abrams is the perfect platform for many modelers out there and for someone just running to wanting to run a large tank and not have to worry about things breaking off of it. Abrams all day. So that's a bit it for me now. It's been quite a bit, but I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look and summary of my thoughts on the Abrams. Let us know what you think in the comments below. Like, share, comment, subscribe, critique, all the usual fun stuff. And let us know what you think about the Abrams. Do you plan to add one to your uh, Tank Depot? If you did, are you going to keep it stock? Are you going to customize it? Let us know. We're happy to hear. And for now, this is Alpha. I'll see you later.